That's, we got it. It's done. Okay. No, it isn't very big. Oh, we got action. Hey, this is a keeper, I think. Yeah. This is a keeper. There we go. That's, I'd say that's about 20 and a half inches. Or you think we have to put it on the stretcher? He'll be legal. He'll be legal. Okay. Well, we're going to get out the measuring tape here. Something that you should always carry in your boat, a measuring tape. A lot of the pike in this lake seem to be about just the legal size. And there are some in here that would scare you. Give him a portion off there. About ready? Oh, it's down to finish cracking here. What a chance to get one. You don't have the sound there. here there's a bunch of them in there believe it or not yeah I, I believe it. <laughs> there we go you hook them under the dorsal fin right in the back with about a, a 1 0 hook or thereabouts mm -hmm. so that they okay let's see that minnow there that's a good live loon about four or five inches long I like them a little bigger if I can get them for mm -hmm. northern but uh, now you have a sinker a sinker a about sinker. a a foot or About so up. A foot and a half or so up. Wire leader because these Houghton Lake pike have the teeth. And a large bobber to to help hold it up there. Uh huh. Now how far are you going to cast it? Oh, just a little ways out here. All right. And it sets right out there, and you put the clicker on, and when the pike hits it, it goes. And we're all set. And we're all set. Uh, okay. You can set the hook about any time that they're going away from you. If they're coming towards you when you're fishing with a bobber, you got to wait. But when these, a lot of people wait until they take it down twice and all that. Mm -hmm. well, you can catch them or you can feed them. Yeah. That's the way yeah. I feel about it. Mm -hmm. uh, when they've got the bobber down and they're going away from you, you can get a tight line on them, hooking them under the dorsal, you'll get them right in the corner of the mouth nine times out of ten. Sounds good. Okay, what is this bobber called? Uh, this is just a, a slip bobber. Slip and bobber. You, it, it slides along the, uh -huh. the line so that when you set the hook, it'll come right back down to your leader so that it's completely out of the way. And you can fish it uh, five feet, you can fish it 10 feet, 15 feet, whatever, simply by putting a slip knot in the line. And you just whip the line over and reach back through and grab the tip of it. Just a little it. loop. Yeah, okay. Just a little loop. Okay, and, and then the bobber comes the up bobber to that The bobber comes point. up to that. And that's as far as it'll go. Okay, we'll fling it out there. Let's see what that looks like. What's okay. And when you put it out there, uh, well, we'll see how it floats in the water. Holy cow, look at that. Hey, swing around, OJ. OJ, look at what Jim Veracruzzi there from East Michigan Tourist Association is just casting while we're trying to do the setup here, and he got a little pike. <laughs> what do you think, Jim? Is that a legal one? Oh, I don't think so, Fred. That's a little guy. Well, that's some Houghton Lake fishing here. We can't even... <laughs> get set up before we have fish going. Okay, swing on around here, OJ. We gotta get another one out here. Uh, what are you using for bait, Jim? An eerie dairy. An eerie dairy, fishing for walleye. Okay, now we'll throw this out. And throw this out, she sets right out there. When the pike hits it, she sets right up and heads right for the bottom. Yeah, otherwise it lays flat. Well, that'll be fun, keep an eye on that. I like bobber fishing myself, I get it. Hey, that's, 
it's a real charge when that thing goes down under. Mm -hmm. You know, your heart just starts racing. Okay, well we can fish with two lines. So the other one will rig for walleye. Okay, now how are we gonna rig up for walleye here? Use the Lindy rig? Well, I've got a Lindy rig on here. Uh, a lot of times I'll cast with a beetle spin or something like that if I have one line out and I wanna do a little casting. Uh, Lindy rig uh, is pretty easy to set up. You put a mm -hmm. slip sinker and it slip comes sinker down to the... and a short... Uh, a... OJ, run down there and just... Okay, well now, now the tip of this rod, this is, uh, this is an oldie but goodie. How old is this? Oh, it's got to be probably 45 years old, I suppose. Metal rod, look at the... Spring steel. Uh, and I can tell you haven't varnished these guides every year. Not lately. <laughs> like, like, but it works, they hang on. We get down here to the cork handle, and, uh, well... That's the third cork handle. On. Third cork handle has been wrapped yeah. with tape. Look at this reel, this... We'll put the rubber back up there. Well, the reel's only about 30 years old, so... A Fluger Supreme. But this catches fish. People think you have to have the latest and the most modern. You really don't. No. You can get something out of the attic and catch plenty of fish on it. Look at how you've rigged up here. With a big hook and a, a steel leader for pike. Have a few knots in the line, but this is 20 pound deck run. Yep. So you're all set with the old Dayton float. That's how it's done. I mean, you could buy this. Well, you, I don't know if you could buy this at a garage sale or not. It might almost be an antique. Eventually, you, or somewhere you can. Somewhere I bought one can. for my wife last year, a uh, spring steel rod at a, at a garage sale. That's yeah. spring steel. Now, what can spring steel do? What can it do? Well, spring steel has got a lot of pretty good tendencies. It'll go, It'll go just like about that, anywhere yeah. you want to go, yeah. and yet it's got just a, a real, real sensitive pull on mm -hmm. it. It doesn't take any. Well, this is what uh, graphite and boron and all this is supposed to replace. But that isn't to say that uh, these newer rods are the... Oh, okay, okay. Nice little walleye. Yeah. Got a little minnow. And a minnow. Yeah. On a minnow? Yep. Got a little minnow. You mean, well, that didn't take it on the bobber. What'd no, you do, no, switch? I had a little minnow cast. Little minnow. Oh, you switched techniques, yeah. switched techniques on us. Yes. Switch techniques. What did I tell you a few uh -huh. minutes ago? Did I tell you? Yeah, we yeah, have yeah, some yeah. little minnows in there? Yeah. Well, <laughs> for crying out loud, let's get them out. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Let's hold it up there. Let's see that. Well, that's a nice one. Good girl. He's got a broken back, too. Look at that. Hmm. You feel? Yeah, look yeah, at that. Awesome. Can you see that, OJ? A close up? Look at that. Hold it up so towards the camera so we can see the. No, tip it the other way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, now I can see. Just tail. Yeah, turn it around. Broken. You know, sort of turn it slowly. Yeah, that's been broken. Yep. Huh. Great. Okay, there they are, minnows. How many minnows can you keep in a bucket, Ron? Oh, it depends on the size of them. You can keep a couple dozen in a bucket this size. If they're that size minnow, mm -hmm. the larger minnows, uh, maybe a dozen. Okay, now the minnows, you have to keep lively like this. So an important thing to remember, if you have a bucket like this, is when you get back to the dock or where you're anchored, let's put them in the water. Like so, right? You just right. like that. And this floats on on the top. Right. And the minnows can get fresh oxygen. That's really all there is to keeping minnows. If you keep them fresh and keep the water changed, they're no problem. They're fun It'll to last fish with. a long time. Sure. Yeah. Probably the best bait you can get. That's what the artificials imitate. Yeah. What we're gonna do here, the technique that Ron just caught that walleye on, was hooking a minnow, small minnow by the lips, just through there. Plain, running plain line, no sinkers or weights on it, and casting it out and fishing it like a rubber worm, like you would with a rubber worm. Let it sink to the bottom and then just pull it on slowly every now and then. Is that it, Ron? Yeah. That's the technique. I just picked up a walleye that way, but that's a, an easy way to fish with minnows. Lots of ways to fish with them. Catching lots of fish here, too. Yeah. Yep. All right. Yep. Get that net. We don't want to lose this one. This feels pretty good too. Might be a pike too. Right? What? It might be a pike. Might too. be a pike. All right. Yeah. Could be either. Okay. You ready, Eddie? I'm ready. Yeah, the net man is ready here. Oh. Oh. oh this looks like a, I can't even see it yet. I'm just. Uh... Here it is. Oh, it's a little rock, rock bass. bass. Rock bass. Rock bass. Yep. That, we have no. I can get it. Oh, okay. I'll get it here. 
Well, that's done with the minnow. <laughs> oh, that's not a bad one. Nice rock bass. Nice rock bass. Okay, well, night crawlers, a favorite bait, probably America's number one fishing bait. What do you keep them in? Just dirt, or you can, no? Is I this use bedding? bus bedding, and there's a little bit of dirt in there too. Uh, do you keep them refrigerated? No, I keep them in a cool basement. Yeah, as long as you they keep, keep them cool. Real well. Forty to fifty degrees is, is about yeah. the best. But you pick all your crawlers yourself? Yeah. So that's something people can do at night. at night and after a rain, especially. Mm -hmm. They're out, and you can get a bucket full. You can't beat that. Something for the kids to do. It's a fun activity. Something to oh, collect. Yeah. Just keep them like that. If you keep them cool, you're all set. It'll last a long time. Okay, now another favorite bait here is a leech, known as a bloodsucker. Yeah. Not a, a lot of people don't like to touch these. They're slippery. And they can't uh, suck your blood while you're no, putting them on a hook. They don't go fast enough. Yeah, you just hook them in one end. They're really tough. They're a lot tougher than night crawlers are. Mm -hmm. Right there, that's a leech, and it'll stretch out when it's in the it water. It stretches out when it's in the water. Okay, and cast that out. And cast that out and let it lay on the bottom for a little while, and then raise it up and give it a little pull and just mm -hmm. ease it back in just a little bit. Okay, now this type of fishing, it's good to use a spinning reel, a light. That's right. Light type uh, of drill, light action. A Fenwick with a six pound test on it, and a real light reel. Okay, well, we'll keep an eye on the bobbers for pike. And we'll keep a sort of a finger there, look at the tip of the rod for the walleye. Right. 